Okay, what's up guys? Today I'm going to be talking about the all new, or I was going to say new and improved, but it's not new and improved, it's just new, uh, male contraceptive injection. Now, I saw this is trending on Facebook and I had to check it out and it's pretty controversial in my eyes. Now, I'm going to go a little bit on this article that I read about it. I read one article and it basically said nothing about it, didn't say what was in it, all that sort of stuff, but I read on, found some more articles on it. It said routine hormone injections are into the buttocks of 320 men drastically shrunk their sperm count and prevented pregnancies during a year-long uh, early phase trial. Uh, the findings suggest that a future hormonal uh, male contraceptive one day may be possible. Um, however, the data revealed high rates of side effects such as acne and mood swings, suggesting much more tweaking needs to be done. Earlier work showed that high doses of testosterone could rub out sperm count in men, so basically testosterone, what people call steroids, it's basically the main male hormone, like how estrogen is in women. So this could rub out sperm count in men, but they also raise concerns about the side effects. Cutting the dosage level uh, with a steroid hormone known as progesterone, for those of you know knows what progesterone is, it's used off, often in the female contraceptive pill. Normally it's an estrogen progesterone balance. Sometimes you can get progesterone only. Um, so yeah, they go on about this. It says which activates uh, progesterone uh, the progesterone receptor, um, which was a potential workaround. And that's actually what they did. So when I read on here, men was age 18 to 45. It says injections into their bums every eight weeks. You might use glutes or buttocks. Bum sounds weird. Uh, that was over 24 week suppression phase. So I don't know what they did after that. So it only says during a 24 week suppression phase. And then after that, it doesn't, it doesn't say what they did after that. So it's kind of confusing. It says the Injections contained 200 milligrams of progesterone and 1,000 milligrams of testosterone. That was done every eight weeks. So it must have been a very long-acting testosterone. If it wasn't, then that'd be a bit silly. By the end, nearly 96% of those remaining in the study, because some dropped out, saw their sperm count fall to less than 1 million uh, milliliters, uh, which sounds like a shitload, but the normal range is 15 to 200 plus million per mil, which is crazy. During the testing phase, four women got pregnant and six men saw their sperm count rebound, which means they could have had a probably a high chance of getting their wives pregnant because all these guys were married too in a relationship and they weren't keen on having a child in the next two years. So bad luck to those four. Um, uh, after the study was complete, 5% of men um, didn't recover their sperm count um, levels. Um, uh, in the year after their last injection. Still in the end, 75% of participants said they'd be willing to use the contraceptive method in the future if it was available. Um, and I'm gonna put a link to that article below so you can read it and there's a little bit more in there as well. Now, using testosterone to suppress um, your sperm count, that's kind of been known by bodybuilders for years because most of the time while guys are on testosterone, generally, it's hard for them to get their wives, girlfriends, or whatever pregnant. Some guys think they can use that as a contraceptive, which doesn't always work as well because there's still that chance you can still get your wife or girlfriend or whatever pregnant. So don't suggest just using testosterone, but I suppose if your girlfriend is taking a pill and you are doing that, then I suppose you're doubling up, you kind of got a better chance. The fact they included progesterone is pretty interesting to me because progesterone, if you see guys, uh, I'm sure you guys heard of gyno, gynecomastia, uh, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Progesterone can cause that because you can get either estrogen-related gynecomastia or progesterone-related gynecomastia. Generally, they're the two. And typically, estrogen is the most common form. So you get that when like young boys are developing into men. Sometimes they get an over-secretion of estrogen, especially if they've got more body fat because estrogen is actually you know, made in the fat cells or it's aromatized in the fat cells. Yeah, and then you get gynecomastia, which is this. Yuck. Gross. Show this one. Ooh. <laughs> now those nipples are pretty disgusting and you don't want those, but I'm wondering if any of these guys actually got this because they're giving them progesterone. It's obviously raising progesterone, which uh, raised progesterone can actually cause uh, erectile dysfunction. So um, there's a report that some of these guys had increased um, sex drive, but that's probably because of the testosterone, obviously. Um, but it's it'd be hard to say if it's enough progesterone to actually cause those really negative side effects, but uh, it's surprising that it wasn't kind of, I don't know, I feel like it would be a better method. I'd prefer, I think it'd be healthier and a better method just to go high testosterone, but it depends how high that was. So it's taking a thousand milligrams over um, eight weeks, which is a pretty, 
I suppose, standard sort of replacement type of a dosage. Considering how med- you know the medical community is now on on like testosterone, how strict they are, I'm surprised they actually included testosterone in this. But um, and doing a testosterone only one, I'd say a lot of guys would go to the doctor and say. I reckon a big reason why we won't do it is because guys will go to the doctor and say, oh, I want the, I want the, the, uh, the male pill, like the male injection. Um, and basically, they'll just probably add on top of their own steroids. So they'll get you know, X amount from the doctor and then they'll get their own as well. So And just stack it on top. So I don't think that will work. But um, yeah. And uh, here's a few little urban dictionary definitions of gyno if you want to take a little look at these, which I actually enjoyed. Gynecomastia, abnormal growth of the breast breast tissue in human males. The example, Rob's gyno is embarrassing. He should start wearing a bra for those bitch tits. I enjoy it. But anyway, that's it for this video. Let me know what you think of the male contraceptive, uh, not pill, male contraceptive injection um, every week, eight weeks. Would you get it done? I wouldn't, personally. I don't want bitch tits like Rob. And uh, yeah, give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down, comment below. Sweet.